My talk today is about paranormal ethnographies of uh, ketamine. Uh, the main focus of uh, this research, which I'm conducting on and off for about uh, four years now, is um, consists in looking at singularities in, psych in psychedelic experiences. Um, I mm, went close to the concept of uh, para paranormal because uh, paranthropology is uh, uh, the newborn field of anthropology which stands very close to the area of my study. In 2010, it was in fact established the first free journal of anthropological approach to the paranormal. Paranthropology investigates uh, social scientific approaches to the study of paranormal experiences, beliefs and phenomena in all of their varieties. Parapsychology uses the term psi-phenomena to refer to the supposed human faculties of psychokinesis, um, extrasensory perception, which includes telepathy, clairvoyance and precognition. Such phenomena are central in the parapsychological literature and considered as real evidences. Still in the same thread, but somehow different, my research includes another central element, which are psychedelics. So to be more specific, my field of research could be eventually identified as psi-paranthropology. <coughs> so what I'm actually collecting now is an ethnography of weird psychedelic experiences. Why weird? Weird because actually is the most popular term to define such uh, phenomena. Uh, however, we can uh, use also many other similar terms to define this kind of experiences, such as paranormal, supernatural, extraordinary, anomalous, transpersonal, exceptional, and magic. <coughs> so, even the concept of uh, weirdness that mm, depends on the culture in which is embedded. In fact, as uh, Luke said, wrote, uh, what's weird to one culture is acceptable to another. What's paranormal somewhere is normal somewhere else. The term paranormal itself applies to phenomena that are not currently understood or accepted as possible within science. However, science has not got all the answers, given that most of the universe, the dark matter, dark energy and consciousness, for instance, remains a mystery. So, um, uh, what, I'm what I'm investigating in this uh, research are those mysteries in the psychedelic experiences that are often close to what actually magical practice is. I speak about magic since very often uh, these phenomena enact a reality shift or uh, like a contingent transformation in consensus reality, transformations that are not only psychological but very often physical. This goes to another uh, uh, very important question that stands at the very base of my research, that is what is actually reality? Um, what is reality is also a video project on which I'm actually working now and that I will, uh, uh, I will, I hope it will be ready in the next uh, month. And uh, um, concerning reality, especially in a psychedelic context, uh, we encounter many different types of definitions. So uh, we have consensus reality, alternate reality, uh, altered reality, visionary reality, augmented reality, holographic realities, computer-generated reality, reality tunnels, and so on. So, to cut a very long story short, the baseline of my work is that there is no single dominant or static reality, but rather a number of realities that are constructed in the process of interactions and dialogues. So, interactions and dialogues are in fact at the base of narrative, which is another very important core foundation of the fieldwork. As Barthes wrote, people without narratives do not exist. Everything is in fact constructed by our words. Our words and our interpretations create realities, modes of understanding. We don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. So keep in mind that what I'm going to say later or whatever you listen, every type of understanding of reality, science, philosophy, magic, physics, everything, is just a narrative. This leads to uh, what uh, Robert Anton Wilson would call multimodal agnosticism, 
which owes a lot to paranormal psychedelic experiences, of course. So, Wilson multimodal agnosticism is, is a practice of not holding to any belief, but instead of treating each belief as a tool or a gateway to a, particularly, a particular reality or world or class of experience. Any perspective we have on the world is bound to be part of a massive, inclusive gestalt, a whole package or bundle of beliefs about the world that come as a complete nested set Every belief implying every other, and the world of and whole lot acting as an epistemological and ontological gravity that sucks you back again and again to conformity with the set of beliefs. These sets of world describing or world creating beliefs are known as reality tunnels. Once we recognize that we are in a particular reality tunnel which limits everything we can think, we are then free to shift to another. So my fieldwork, it's very difficult to delimitate the uh, geographical area of my fieldwork. In fact, I would say that my fieldwork is mostly <laughs> identified in the multiverse or the hyperspace and uh, all the possible alternate realities. The actors involved uh, in the study are these people broadly defined as psychonauts brave psychonauts or hyperspace warriors, multiverse uh, magicians, and so on. All these people that gravitate in the worldwide underground culture of uh, festival culture, uh, occult circles, and uh, intentional communities. With my groups of explorers, we have uh, um, actually established what we call an hyperspace agency. So, um, how to induce a paranormal experience? It's not, in fact, sufficient the use of a particular molecule, but it is important uh, to take care of certain setting, experience of the user, which very often to uh, have such an experience is important to have a lot of experience, individual intention, help of a sitter and a guide, and inter integration and interpretation, which uh, it's very connected with the process of narrative so uh, very often the integration and interpretation um, is the relationship the user established with the researcher, which is me, uh, starting uh, narrating what is actually happening. So mm, before I, was, uh, I did um, research on Changa and the transformative uh, uh, potentials of Changa. Now, as, uh, as you uh, have understood, I'm working with ketamine. Uh, ketamine is a pharmaceutical product and it's uh, mostly used uh, nasally or intramuscularly and there are different ki ty types of ketamine, different isomers. Um, ketamine was uh, firstly synthesized in 1962 by Calvin Stevens uh, at Park, Park Davis Labs and it was, uh, it was uh, uh, found while searching for an anesthetic replacement. Ketamine was used uh, uh, for anesthe anesthesia because uh, it suppresses breathing much less that mo than most other available anesthetics. In the, in the 70s, patients began to report unwanted visio visions while under the influence of ketamine. <coughs> so ketamine uh, is also known as dissociative anesthetic, or as Marsha Moore was calling him, it the um, aesthetic anesthetic. Uh, so she uh, brought the book Journey into the Bright World, which, uh, in which she calls herself the priestess of the goddess Ketamine. Very famous is also uh, John C. Lilly, which wrote uh, many books. Uh, mm, the most famous on ketamine is The Scientist, uh, in which he uh, refers to ketamine as the vitamin K. Um, he had many um, experiences with ketamine, such as encounters with uh, extraterrestrial beings. Uh, he said to have uh, this, uh, um, I I this relationship with a place called um, Earth Coincidence Control Office, uh, in which all the uh, coincidence of the Earth were uh, actually decided in the hyperspace. 
and uh, um, he also uh, cured himself from a very heavy migraine that was uh, um, from which he was suffering for a, for a long for his whole life and with ketamine he saw this migraine going out of his brain uh, like if it was something really going out of his brain so also Robert Anton Wilson said that after using ketamine several times becomes increasingly increasingly hard to believe you are not God <laughs> To understand the neurological space, Dr. Leary assumes that the nervous system consists of eight potential circuits or mini brains. Four of these brains are in the usually <coughs> active left lobe and are concerned with our terrestrial survival. Four are extraterrestrials and reside in the silent or inactive left, uh, sorry, right lobe and are those uh, for use in our future evolution. Um, Leary said that ketamine triggered this eighth circuit, which is the most evoluted one. Dr. Leary suggests that circuit eight is literally neuroatomic, infra, supra and metaphysiological, a quantum model of consciousness and a conscious model of quantum mechanics. Indicates strongly that the atomic consciousness is the explanatory link which will unite parapsychology and paraphysics into the first scientific empirical experimental theology in history. This neuroatomic intelligence is for mutation beyond terrestrial domesticity. So already Leary was recognizing back in the days the power of ketamine being a modem that would serve as a, uh, as a collective to the collective evolution of humankind. In fact, Jensen wrote that some people believe that ketamine is a mental moment, modem which can potentially connect the mind to everything else, hallowing a peak behind the curtain at the inner workings of this and other realities. However, we don't have to underestimate the um, negative parts of ketamine. In fact, the mm, famous book uh, Ketamine Dreams and Realities, uh, written by Johnson in 2001, in this book, uh, as you see in the title, he writes dreams and realities. Ketamine is in fact a source of both healing and harm, integration and disintegration. It is still usually given as an equal mixture of positive and negative, right-handed and left-handed, R and S, molecular forms. So, <coughs> ketamine, as you might know, has very addictive features. So if used in the wrong way, it could actually be very dangerous. However, my study, my research, focus on people that are using ketamine only to uh, obtain certain experiences and not in uh, their everyday life. So uh, I would like to address you a question. Who of you had, have, have had any paranormal experience with ketamine? Can you raise your... Okay. <laughs> So it's not so uh, paranormal anymore, it's getting quite <laughs> normal. <laughs> 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 Let me list the type of experiences I have encountered during my, um, my fieldwork and my interviews. So um, I've encountered telepathy, precognition, space and time modifications, uh, out of body <coughs> experiences, near death experiences, entity encounters, psychokinesis, mediumship, remote viewing, mental reprogramming, interdimensional healing, physical transformation, and tada, and teleportation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I now tell you a few of the narratives I have encountered um, very briefly because we don't have much time. So uh, this is an experience of telepathy. And the user said, suddenly I felt our thoughts, feelings, and experiences were being exchanged with each other, almost like two computers sharing files over the internet. At this point, everything was immersed into bright white light. We were one soul with two physical extensions to experience. And she knew and experienced what I felt, and I knew and experienced what she felt. The nature of this trip reminded of the 5-MO DMT white light experience, more so than a typical K-hole. 
So this is also another important uh, thing to uh, realize, is that there is a big difference from between a K-hole and, uh, uh, let's say, tryptamine experience with ketamine. I don't know why and how, but it's possible to enter the same uh, space Th that is the same space of DMT or uh, high dose of psilocybin or LSD with ketamine in specific conditions. So, uh, about time modification. Ketamine can have a profound effect on the sense of time, which often slows dramatically before vanishing completely. Awareness may then appear to enter a state of eternity. Eons of evolutionary events can seem to take place before a sense of real time is regained. Space modification. I was lying in my bed meditating. I was aware of being in my room, but I felt its shape, its shape started to change. Then I opened my eyes. The room became bigger and bigger, and from a cubic white shape, transformed into a golden sphere. With no more walls, everything disappeared. It was left to nothing else than the sacred shelter, my bed. It looked like a, trypam a tryptaminic experience, so much more calmer and relaxed. Out-of-body experiences. So as you see, there is also the amount of uh, um, substance the user has taken. So in this case, it was uh, 500 uh, milligrams with multiple times uh, nasal insufflation. And it reports, it is not only an astral travel, it is a state in which whilst being still somehow present, I can see beyond matter and I can see other astral bodies and communicate with them beyond the personality they have in this string of the multiverse. I can see the essence and strength of souls out of this time and space. These souls appearing in the shape of warriors, druids, witches and other ancient figures communicate their mission and the reasons why I have met them in the real bodies, those of my closest friends. I feel I'm following the right magical path, embracing my hidden potentials. Life is becoming surely more meaningful. Mediumship, I was very sad after the unexpected loss of two close friends. I did not know how to get out of that sh sorrow. One night I decided to follow a K-meditation proto protocol to release these negative feelings. During the practice, while I was, uh, was perceiving my astral bo body floating above my bed, I felt the presence of both my friends next to me. I clearly saw them. They talked to me. I felt all their love. They gave me messages for the rest of our group. Now I know they are still with us. The sorrow disappeared and with it also my skepticism. So about the K-meditation protocol, we are trying to work on our um, dosage that can easily uh, take you to this uh, uh, altered reality, alternate reality. So uh, for sure mm, the uh, dosage not needs to be sub-anesthetic, um, mostly insufflated, um, so starting from 35 milligrams and every 25 minutes increasing 25 milligrams. Um, to arrive at a maximum of 120 milligrams. So it's enough for five insufflations generally to get to that point in multiple uh, times. So, and very um, useful can be also a synergy with a microdose of LSD and um, also uh, quite uh, uh, a, a point is not to have a tolerance, so not to be addicted to ketamine, not using it very, very often. Otherwise, this whole story doesn't work. <coughs> so I've witnessed us also uh, some paranormal events where uh, reality changing after changing something in the other dimensions. And uh, I personally observed uh, uh, rejuvenation, disappearing of chronic physical pain, and mutation of iris color. <coughs> so this is the weirdest experience uh, that I uh, I've I've uh, wi not wit witnessed but listened. And um, so a friend and I had the intention to break through and explore the multiverse. Already high on LSD, we knew we needed K to get there. We were sitting on a hammock near a tree. We said. Let's start the engine and snorted the lines. Immediately we stood up and started walking. 
we suddenly saw a digital wormhole, a tunnel of digital information. We both saw it and together decided to enter. Few seconds after entering the tunnel, we found ourselves physically materializing in a completely different place, between the angers of a clothes shop in a street market. <laughs> okay, so this is just uh, one of the many possible tunnels of reality. Okay, so as to conclude, it is uh, firstly very important to say that my uh, research is still ongoing and I still uh, am uh, collecting interviews and uh, um, working on these uh, narratives. And um, so um, what I realized until now is that whichever is the origin of uh, or the nature of reality, ketamine is surely an instrument that could be extremely helpful in understanding more of it being able to connect the user with different strings of the multiverse, different versions of oneself, entities, past, present, future and parallel lives, and induce profound healings, and many other things. So ketamine gives many possibilities if used with awareness. <coughs> My research is uh, therefore just trying to open the Pandora box of this exploration, being, being uh, mm, pioneering in its demand for reaching the weirdest aspect of our psychedelic experiences, those that go way beyond the common narratives towards the realm of the mystery, the esoteric and the gnostic experiences. Um, in, a in a previous work on Chang, I defined these deeply transformative experiences as psychedelic gnosis. And with ketamine, we could even speak about something, uh, something about uh, more particular, which can be psychedelic metagnosis, for it's becoming always more abstract and disconnected from this realm of understanding. It has been many years so that people are working with ketamine. It's also considered, as I said, very harmful and addictive. And um, it was also defined as a psychedelic heroin and surely became an evil uh, molecule for the majority of the explorers. However, as a matter of fact, uh, it is used with, if it's used with moderation and with uh, specific intention, it's uh, very uh, mm, important as an instrument to go in parallel uh, realities and is not a physically invasive. So um, my suggestion now is uh, to keep exploring. I'm of course open to collect more interviews and get in touch with those of you that have had this kind of experiences and that uh, would like to try achieve this kind of experiences. And for now, uh, I thank you for all attention and safe journeys and keep it weird. Thank you. <laughs>